going to talk to you about Llama Stack and specifically how and why you'll want to use it for business purposes. So up front, this video will be very oriented towards people that are interested in enterprise level AI and AI for uh, enterprise and for business very specifically. Um, that's kind of what Llama Stack is geared towards and, and the niche that it solves very specifically. Up front, there's a um, competing software and it's software that a lot of people watching this video would probably be familiar with called Langchain. And then so I have said, and a lot of people have said for a long time that Langchain is a great product, but it's not production ready. It doesn't um, give you enough production security in order for it to be anything more than a great developer tool. Uh, Llama Stack is kind of uh, wants to solve that problem <laughs> to be the production ready lang chain. And then, so if you're a business and your question, like your upfront question is, is how do I serve my AI model to my customers? Like I, I understand the concept of building a model somewhat, but um, how do I actually get that and, and have my customers, whether that be internal or external, like uh, facing, uh, utilize that and utilize the model. Um, and then so you would utilize something like Llama Stack specifically for that. And then so let's break this down, right? What what exactly does Llama Stack do? And so up front, uh, kind of when I, I've had a lot of uh, discussions around kind of this specific topic with businesses and business owners now. And up front, like when I first talked to them about um, like a llama model or um, like a, not chat GPT, <laughs> like a, a smaller model than that, I kind of get the sense that they think of these models in one of two ways, either that it's just a server that sits somewhere uh, or it's this nebulous concept that just sits in the cloud and they don't know much about it. It's like one of those two things, right? And um, the model itself is, is in the middle of those two things. It would be more equivalent to your website. And so for business purposes, you want to look at the model and the environment that the model looks uh, it lives in, like a website, or if you're an enterprise organization, like a walled off environment for say, like your sales and your marketing team for, would be a, a fantastic example, right? Like say that your um, CRM system generally isn't generally attached to the rest of your environment, right? It's it's siloed off within its own ecosystem. And, and it would be, and it could be, and would be, I assume, attached to BI tools, uh, other types of tools and other systems bringing it in, but it's a closed environment, a closed ecosystem at the end of the day, right? Like. Uh, it's really a box. <laughs> if that box were set on fire tomorrow, the business would be fine and would survive. And and so, I mean, upfront, if you're not setting up your your AI models and your LM models in, in a business environment under that infrastructure, you're doing it wrong flat out. So, uh, if that what I just said doesn't make sense to you. Uh, fire alarm, you should definitively take a step back if you have LM models uh, employed in your business environment uh, because it, it, it's like um, a security hazard just waiting to happen. <laughs> but so uh, within that and, and, and moving forward within this, right? So within that environment, that, that closed environment, that closed box, uh, you need ways to access this closed box from the outside, right? And then so you want different ways and, and different tools to do it. And so the most common tool and the most frequent one that people think of is inference, meaning that I want the model to do something. I want to communicate with the model. I want to ask it a question. I want to prompt it. That's inference. But there's also other things that you might want to do with the model. For example, agents. You might want to store external memory, which is becoming a bigger and bigger concept. You might want to do evaluations on the model. You might want to store synthetic data in its own pre-trained area where you can access it. Um, you might want to have batch of agents. You might want to have safety protocols and safety AI models in and of themselves. You might want to have batch inference processes, and you might want to have like post training, like those other systems, external systems like you would within another um, environment, like a Salesforce environment or your CRM, uh, as I brought up towards at the top. 
Uh, and very specifically, and lastly, you might want to connect all of this to telem uh, telemetry, so like external systems, right? Uh, meaning like your um, some sort of um, access to internet, to uh, phone, et cetera, but you want that to be siloed off again, right? You want to make sure that that's, this environment is not touching your production environment for any of these things or any of these external systems, and you want to make sure that you have complete safety, complete checks on all of the box. That's what essentially, in a nutshell, Llama Stack is and provides. Most uh, providers that operate within this space and most people that operate within this space, as you can see, they know that this is the, that this is, has been uh, a problem, right? And then so kind of when um, AI first started becoming huge and people first started thinking about this, a lot of people jumped into this inference space. The reason why None of these players have taken off within this space is because AI in and of itself is unique uh, when it comes to these needs uh, as opposed to your other like forms of software, like your CRM or your website, et cetera. It has uh, different endpoints that need to be accessed. In this instance, agents, inference, memory, safety, and telemetry, and they all need to be treated individually. Uh, and that individualization of the endpoints very specifically is another feature that sets AI apart within this instance, as opposed to other frameworks and make, makes it far more complex, especially for the enterprise environment when it comes to these things. And so very specifically diving into Llama Stack and, and how to operate it, I'm not going to go heavy into kind of um, tutorials, walk, uh, like actual walkthroughs, et cetera, because they give all of this to you um, within their actual release. Uh, Llama Stack, I can't state it enough, like they've done an amazing job within this release. I wouldn't be highlighting it myself if I hadn't gone through and, and, and seen all of the, kind of the, the power and, and what it's built out to do. They built every single aspect of this. They give you all the documentation that you need, all the collab notebooks that you would need. Uh, you have, for example, right here uh, from Jump, a quick start guide. They do partner with a lot of people for their quick starts. So, so if you read through their guides, they'll be written by different people. So in this instance, this one's written by Olama, just pointing that out. But so they do have a quick start guide, Full documentation. That's like, um, uh, like, like you know, <laughs> exactly what you would expect from a commercial application. Um, and then also uh, their collab, the the collab notebooks. Uh, and then they also they have more than just that collab notebook that they highlight within here. Uh, they have multiple collab tutorials that you can walk through and utilize um, within this. But so just opening up this uh, first tutorial, it's very straightforward as to how to install it, right? It's just pip install, and it's just pip install llama stack. Um, and then from there, again, <laughs> these different tutorials are written by different people, you can tell, right? So this one is written by Together AI, uh, because this one is having you then utilize the Together AI uh, APIs all throughout this particular one. Uh, and then you just initialize Llama Stack via your Together API key, because this is written by Together AI. Again, just highlighting and pointing these things out. Um, and then from here, you can call your individual models. And then so this is what I want to call uh, available models, right? And then so this is kind of the benefit of this, like up until this point, if you're maybe um, a little bit removed from the technical aspects of an enterprise organization, maybe nothing that I've said has uh, resonated with you so far as to why exactly you would use this. This is the bottom line, right? So let's say you set up a, a, an application, you set up a stack, and you want an AI model to be a part of your stack. And then as an enterprise organization, you go through the due, 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 due diligence of making sure that you do all of this right. You code it out, uh, you have it, um, let's say, and then let's say that you have your backend in, in, um, in non-Python, right? It would be a, a good example because Python is um, uh, really more for, um, just for testing and for playground purposes, and then your actual environment that you use is C-sharp, just as an example, or Rust. Uh, and then so you want to like actually like get out of Python and move this data over, but you've got everything all written here um, and, and everything's all written to go, right? And then so as opposed to just kind of like casing all of this together on a back end and, and um, what a lot of organizations do, kind of like Frankensteining your back end together and then having to change that code again every single time that you need to make a change, a model change or uh, something small within this, this applies the framework for you to just plug and play, for example, a model change within that framework. So it gives you the framework up front and then allows you to do like a, a plug and play like you would for 
Um, think of it like um, a, a header for a website, right? It's like the same type of uh, toolage that it provides uh, for you. So like the more complex your backend is and the more siloed that you want this to be, which I'm assuming would be uh, if you're doing your due diligence right, uh, any enterprise company that's watching this, then that's exactly what you want. Like you want this above anything else, right? Um, and then so just highlighting the features of uh, Llama Stack very specifically and to why you would want to utilize this. So one of the features that I mentioned up front is that multiple programming languages, right? Let's say that you have stuff written in Python. It uh, has multiple developer interfaces up front and out of the box. That's a, a huge part of this framework, right? So it doesn't matter if you're using CLI, SDKs, Python, Node, iOS, Android, whatever your app um, is actually based in. So React, uh, React Native, etc. They have all of the different uh, here, here, Python, Swift, Node, and Kotlin depending on what your actual SDK needs are. You have an SDK for your individual programming languages that you can just utilize. You have your full upfront and programmable SDK uh, for, for example, your Llama model. Um, and then so this gives you essentially like the tools and the APIs that you need uh, in order for any commercial uh, application to really run in a um, actual and developed environment, right? So uh, anyone that is looking through this and, and uh, hopefully has made it this far through the video uh, with a technical aspect, I think uh, I've, you should understand now exactly what um, you're getting from uh, the from Llama Stack very specifically. Uh, I will highlight kind of the last thing um, within this and one of the unique features uh, within this uh, framework is Llama Guard specifically. Uh, and then so if you're not familiar with Llama Guard, I can go to the documentation here and see if it has uh, anything about Llama Guard. Safety, yeah. So apply safety policies to outputs at a system, uh, not only model level, and then so, but this utilizes model model guard um, and our uh, yeah uh, llama guard, and then so llama guard is essentially a trained llama model, right? And then so it's I think they have one B, three B, and eight B models, and then. They're trained very specifically for classification, and uh, they like so within that they would th they work exactly like you think that they would. So it classifies uh, every input into uh, categories, and then so it has it's trained on um, inputs that would be harmful categories. Um, so like yeah, like weapons, um, self harm, etc. And then so if a uh, a prompt goes into one of the, it's classified as one of those harmful categories, then it's flagged. Um, and then so you have uh, flexibility and ability to improve the uh, Llama Guard model within that and to go through and to enhance it. I want to highlight up front, Llama Guard is Meta's big solution uh, towards kind of a security um, of LLM models within these environments. Like uh, up front, and I will say it very clearly as a researcher, as a developer, as uh, someone that builds these models uh, from the ground up, there is no such thing as a 100% secure LLM model that exists in the status quo. Um, and anyone that says that there is is either lying to you directly uh, or uh, doesn't know enough uh, about security flaws that exist within this uh, and within these spaces. So even with a model like Llama Guard, you are still running into um, security concerns that you will still have to deal with uh, and you would should and should still put external security guidelines on top of um, Llama Guard, but just highlighting uh, exactly what that allows you to do. Um, and then uh, very specifically, um, the uh, last thing to note within this is um, that it does allow you to uh, connect to uh, like scoring for uh, both internal and external benchmarks uh, for uh, testing and training purposes. So overall, this does give you like uh, a very commercialized version of uh, Llama Stack overall for inference. The kind of actually the last part of this video that I'll leave you with is um, so, and I think this is a, the, a most very critical part of this that businesses often don't think about is that so. This doesn't solve all of your problems, right? Because you still have the inference problem even with this framework. So you still have to have something within this that is uh, inference hosting your model. So you set up this Llama stack and you configure it and you code it out. Where does your Llama model or your uh, ChatGPT model or whatever model that you're using 
live after being set up within this. If it's ChatGPT, it's very easy, right? It just lives behind its API and you ping its API. If it's a local llama model, it has to live locally somewhere. So you have to have a, a physical server to put it on um, or a cloud server to put it on. Uh, and then within that, you that's where you run into your major API costs and your costs for serving these models on the back end, right? Dealing with the cost of hosting and, and serving these models. And these models, even a small L, uh, llama model is not small to host. I'm very, I give you just a, like a very simple and rough translation of these. So um, let's say llama 8b, 8 billion parameters, right? We can roughly translate 8 billion parameters to 16 gigabytes of GPU, just double it and turn it and convert it to GPU. 16 gigs of GPU. I don't know about you, but I have a, a uh, rather top of the line computer uh, that you can purchase on the market right now. I'd say like better than 95% of computers currently commercially a, a consumer available. And I have eight gigs of GPU. I could not run Llama 8B on my computer that I'm running right now. I would need double the GPU that I currently have in order to run it, which is possible, but I would literally, it's, you are having to go to extremes to host, and that's a small model, Llama 8B, right? So uh, if you want something more powerful than that, it's much, you're going far more powerful than that. Like, uh, so bottom line to me, when it comes to the current inference costs, when you start to break these down and you run these actual numbers and you Scrooge McDuck through the actual numbers as a business, what you'll discover is that there are entities and players currently in this market that are flat out losing money on inference, flat out losing money for you to not set up this own architecture for yourself, Google, uh, other providers, right? That that they will give you inference and give you access to LLM models for cheaper than you could self-host your own llama model. Uh, and then within that, I would very specifically ask myself the question of why are you willing to give away inference for literal free? And it's a Starbucks model, right? And, and so it's going to save you money up front now, but not knowing and not learning these things now is going to cost you money in the end. And they know that. And that's why they're giving you the Starbucks coffee now for free, because they're going to charge you $5 for it two years from now. And so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.